Hey, Dr. Christensen here. I want to talk about the fatty liver index. Here's some quick notes about this video. Fatty liver is super common. Most cases are undiagnosed. There's a new way you can easily see if you are at risk for that or not. And, I'll, and that's a test you can do by just taking data from common blood tests and some body measurements and plugging them into an online calculator. And I'm going to put up a link for you for that. So let's talk in more detail here. So fatty liver, there's a good deep dive I wrote in this not too long ago, and I'll include a link for more good overview concepts. But this is something that can cause a lot of common troubling symptoms. Fatigue, abdominal swelling, IBS type issues, and not only that, it can cause complications. So diabetes, cirrhosis, it's also associated with heart disease and liver cancer. And the big thing is fatty liver is not easy to diagnose. The only perfect test for that is a liver biopsy. And you don't have to get one. <laughs> no one ever does liver biopsies for screening purposes, with the exception of healthy people who want to donate liver tissue to a loved one. And that's how we know how common it is. Because people that have no signs of liver damage, but they want to donate their liver, everyone's got to make completely sure they've got good liver tissue to share. And they do get a liver biopsy. And in those cases, 40% of them have fatty liver. So very prevalent. Now, it is associated with body weight. Um, of those who are obese, 95% likely have fatty liver. But if your weight is good, you are not immune. And many people that are completely lean still can get fatty liver syndrome. So don't think that you're out of the loop that way. Of those who have higher triglycerides, they're also at more risk. Upwards of 53% of those with high triglycerides do get fatty liver. So what is fatty liver? What's going on? Well, your liver is the hub of fuel for your body. So each day, um, let's, let's, let's make up fuel units. Let's say that you burn 10 fuel units to get through the day. And maybe you're going to get 12 in your diet. So the extra two get stored in your liver. Well, the next day, maybe you get eight in your diet. And so you pull out those two to make up the difference when your liver is healthy. But the drawback is, the liver can be affected by environmental toxicants. Data has shown that things like phthalates and BPA and arsenic can change the liver and make it not able to properly store fuel when it should. And I won't get too techy, but you've got two kinds of fuel in the liver. There's glycogen and there's triglycerides. And it's important to have some of both. Now, glycogen takes up a lot of room per its fuel potency. Triglyceride is more concentrated, and you can store a lot more of it. The pitfall is that toxicants, like the ones I mentioned, can make it to where the liver is low in glycogen and just physically packed with triglyceride. And remember, glycogen needs a lot of space. So if there's a whole lot of triglyceride, there's less room for glycogen. Now the pitfall is you need glycogen to burn triglyceride out of your liver. So if you've got no room for glycogen and you're full of triglyceride, you're stuck. And at some point, if the liver has more than 5% triglyceride by mass, we call that fatty liver disease. So the trick is reversing all that and getting that triglyceride out. But let's make sense about how you can know what your risk is. So there's a, there's a, there's a marker called the fatty liver index, which is quite accurate for predicting because there's no perfect marker short of that biopsy. So all you need is two results from pretty common blood tests. That's your triglycerides and your GGT, or your gamma glutamyl transferase. Pretty much any liver panel should include a GGT, and most any blood test that measures cholesterol and lipids will measure triglycerides. They're both better done fasting. You'll also need to know your height, your weight, and your waist circumference. And once you've got those pieces of data, just plug them into the online calculator that I'll provide, and it'll show you a number. And if that number is less than 20, your risk of fatty liver is pretty low. It's not likely a factor for you. If it's over 60, you're at pretty high risk. And in those cases, it'd be smart to follow up with liver ultrasound. If you're somewhere between there, think about the symptoms, ask your doctor. It could be relevant, may not be. But those who are low or higher, it's much more clear. Now, if it is a higher number and you do get an ultrasound, please know that the ultrasound is not perfect either. It'll show if fatty liver is advanced. And the next stage is something called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH. So fatty liver we call NAFL, or non-alcoholic fatty liver. If it's really bad, the cells get stuck together, 
and that's the early hepatitis. So the ultrasound can show if more than 30% of the cells are stuck together and hepatitis is starting. That's the value of it. But if the ultrasound is clear, one still can have fatty liver. So since the last paper that I wrote, there have been some good research updates on fatty liver I want to share with you guys. Uh, one of which is that aerobic exercise can make a huge difference for fatty liver. And this is pretty fascinating. The study showed that there's high intensity interval training, which is popular and great, but there's also moderate intensity training. And it seems they both work equally well to help the liver. The other exciting thing is that even if the exercise is not giving you obvious weight loss, you can still have your liver get healthier from that. We've also had some more papers about milk thistle, showing it's got good protective roles for the liver against cell death. You know, liver cells normally do die off and then repair, and they actually do that pretty quickly, which is why the liver is resilient and regenerative. But if there's a lot of stress from just too much triglyceride, then all that fuel that can't get spent creates more oxidative damage, and cells die faster than they can regenerate. The milk thistle can prevent protect them against that type of damage. There's also more data saying that vitamin E can do a good job actually lowering the damage confirmed from liver bi biopsy, better than medications like metformin can. And acetylcysteine has been shown to be useful. It can raise the liver's protective glutathione. And gan ganoderma, a mushroom extract also called reishi, can also prevent oxidative damage to the liver, which can protect the cells and make them less apt to become harmed and build up the cirrhosis. So in terms of just overall supplementation, liver love is a blend that's of those key ingredients made to support the liver. Also, we've got data saying resistant starch, as is found in the Daily Shake, does stabilize the blood sugar. And that's a huge part of the whole cycle of fuel buildup and just fatty liver forming. So the better the blood sugar stays steady, the healthier the liver becomes. If you're concerned about any of those symptoms, and even just a general screen, please take a look at your blood values and your measurements and plug those into the fatty liver index calculator. If you're in good shape, awesome. If not, it's a good thing to catch. And as always, the docs here at Integrative Health, we're happy to help sort this out. The beautiful thing about fatty liver is that when it's treated well, not only can those symptoms do better, but your disease risk can plummet. And it can happen in like four to six weeks. It can be a quick transition. Dr. Christensen here with you. Take great care of your liver and all your other parts. And I'll talk to you again really soon. Bye-bye.